Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Acara kami menyediakan banyak bahasa. Silakan lihat suprememastertv.com garis miris schedule. The light of this Buddha is infinite and shines on all lands throughout the universe without obstruction. Thus, this Buddha is called Amitabha, mean limitless light, yeah? also meaning limitless lifespan. Yeah? He lived forever. Please keep watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic or Luxese also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Waho Tuzin translates to how are you in Twi, one of the languages spoken in Ghana. My name is Ajua. The loving people of Ghana join you in prayer for a vegan and peaceful world. Ghana is located in West Africa with the prime meridian passing through it. Ghana means warrior king. In the Sonikya indigenous language, it was already recognized as one of the great African kingdoms since the 9th century. English is the official language, though French is also common in the commercial sector. Because of its vast gold reserves and frequent gold trading with European countries since the 14th century, it was once called the Gold Coast. Recently, the government's visionary economic plan known as the Ghana Vision 2020 targets Ghana as the first African country to become a developed country by 2020. The warm tropical climate, diverse wildlife and scenic nature have made Ghana a popular tourist destination. We are elated to briefly introduce Scenic Ghana to you. Caring viewers, we wish you abundant blessings from heaven. For decades, Supreme Master Chennai has illuminated our world with her divine teachings. A fully enlightened master, she imparts the Kuan Yin method of meditation to those desiring to immediately discover the God nature within to achieve in one lifetime eternal liberation from the cycle of transmigration. The Kuan Yin method has been practiced by all enlightened masters such as the worshipped world-honored one Shakyamuni Buddha, the worshipped son of God Jesus Christ, the venerated master and philosopher Confucius, the venerated Lord Krishna, 
the venerated master and philosopher Latsu, the venerated Lord Mahavira, the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and many more. Supreme Master Ching Hai emphasizes that if we always remember God, render selfless service to others, and follow the laws of the universe, we will reach our highest potential as humans and truly understand our purpose on earth. An extraordinary living example of compassion, she lovingly and regularly sends material and financial assistance to refugees, the homeless, natural disaster victims, and others needing relief. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thanks all special individuals, organizations, leaders, and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. May heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness, wishing you the best. Supreme Master Ching Hai receives love and recognition from various organizations, media, governments, individuals, and many awards, such as the 2006 Goosey Peace Prize considered the Nobel Peace Prize of the East, the World Spiritual Leadership Award in 1994, the Mahavira Award in 2008, February 22nd and October 25th, both proclaimed as the Supreme Master Ching Hai Day, an honorary citizen of the United States, etc., and has been honored throughout the years with numerous other awards and accolades for outstanding philanthropic and humanitarian deeds. etc. We apologize for not being able to show many other awards and honors for lack of space and time. Supreme Master Ching Hai respectfully thanks all special individuals, organizations, leaders, and governments for all your genuine, loving, ongoing support. 
may heaven bless you forevermore. We, the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association members, are also sincerely grateful for your expressive kindness, wishing you the best. A true voice for our beautiful animal friends, Supreme Master Ching Hai promotes the peaceful, loving, plant-based diet and envisions with humanity's awakening to the sacredness of all life, a tranquil and glorious all-vegan world where animals and people live in respectful harmony. Her initiatives included Alternative Living Flyer Distribution, the International Vegan Restaurants, Loving Hut, Vegan Food Companies, Vegan Fur Products, Supreme Master Television, as well as writing and speaking to influential government and media leaders. Participating in televised conferences on climate change, etc. Whether we're aware of it or not, her efforts have had an enormous influence on global awareness of the animal-friendly lifestyle and how this benevolent way can bring lasting peace among nations while saving our planet for climate change and disasters. Supreme Master Ching Hai has traveled worldwide and held discourses with the public and her disciples on a variety of spiritual topics. Today we are blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled Buddhist Stories, The Land of Amitabha Buddha, Part 4 or 7, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on August 15, 2015, in France. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Amitabha Sutra. Amitabha, A-M-I-T-A-B-H-A, Amitabha. Thus I have heard, once Buddha was in the land of Shravasti, in the garden of Jetta and Anathapindika. He was accompanied by 1,250 great bhikkhus, bhikkhus, and all of them great arhat. Well known to the assembly, among them were his leading disciples, such figures as the elders Sariputra and Maugala Yayana, 
Mahakashipa, Mahakachiyana, and Mahakaustila. Now you know why I can't remember the name. <laughs> Rivata, Sudipantaka, Nanda, and then Ananda, Rahula, uh, his son, his son, he's a biological son. Uh, Gavampati, Pindola, Bharadvaja, Kalodanyin, Mahakapina, Vakula, and Aniruddha, all great disciples. Also present were the Bodhisattvas, Mahasattva, like Manchusri, Prince of the Dharma, wisdom. The Bodhisattva Ajita, the invincible and the bodhisattva of constant progress, Ganda Hasting, Nityodhyukta, and other such great enlightening beings. Also present was Chakra, the king of the gods. You know, he followed Buddha everywhere before he became Buddha, and now the Buddha is there, he also came down. What are you doing here again? Huh? <laughs> You want to make the Buddha suffer again? The king of the gods, Sakra, yeah, may not be the same Sakra because even king of gods, they change position. They die and somebody else takes place, you know? So the kingdom of God is sometimes up for grab. <laughs> if you're good enough, you just come up. Because the, the Sakra, maybe at that time his marriage run out and then he has to go. And then the throne is empty, so you... Whoever has enough marriage, just come up, take the place. So simple. Hmm? Chakra was there, you know, the king of the gods, along with countless numbers of heavenly beings, making up a great assembly. I have to tell you that Chakra is the king of 33 heavens only. Huh? The gods of the gods of 33 heavens in the astral level. He's not the god of all the gods. Like he's not the god almighty and all that. So don't blame him for being so cruel and wicked and testing the Buddha to be in such many, you know, uh, agonizing way. Yeah, understand? It's not Almighty God. It's not even a second-level God. You never heard him come down and making trouble. And Brahman, you never see him making Buddha suffer. It's just an ashram, similar <laughs> to human if they are from astral level. They do many naughty things, not very kind things, yeah, because astral or hell. At that time, uh, the Buddha said to the elder Sariputra, west of here, past a hundred billion Buddha lands, there exists a world called ultimate bliss. In this land, past a hundred billion Buddha's land, huh? far away, in this land, there exists a Buddha called Amitabha, who is expounding the Dharma right now for his, uh, you know, for his people in that land. Buddha says to, to Sariputra, Why is this land called ultimate bliss? It is called ultimate bliss because the sentient beings in this land are free from the myriad suffering, myriad sufferings, and only know every kind of joy. Furthermore, this land is called ultimate bliss because it is surrounded by seven rings of railings and seven layers of nets and seven rows of trees, all made of the four precious jewels. Moreover, the land of ultimate bliss has many jeweled ponds filled with the waters of eight virtues. The bottom of each of the ponds is pure golden sand, and the stepped walkways that lead up from all four sides of each of the ponds are made of gold, silver, lapis lazuli, and crystal. Above the ponds, there are many towers which are adorned with silver and gold and lapis lazuli and crystals and mother of pearl and red agate. 
In the ponds, there are lotus flowers as big as cart wheels. Blue ones shining with blue light, yellow ones shining with yellow light, red ones shining with red light, and white ones shining with white light, each emitting a subtle, pure fragrance. The land of ultimate bliss is complete with all these merits and adornments. And there is more. Celestial music is constantly playing in this Buddha land, and the ground is made of uh, gold. Flowers in the shape of heavenly orbs rain down at all hours of the day and night. Every morning, the sentient beings of this land decorate their garments with multitudes of wondrous flowers. Ah, the flower rain down so that they can, <laughs> you know, mm, decorate their, their, their garments and make offerings to hundreds of billions of Buddhas in other worlds. So they take the flowers, they fly to billions of other Buddhas' land and make offering. Oh my God. Can you imagine that? Without any airplane, without car, without pollution. Sounds similar to our land, huh? Except it's more wonderful and precious. Yeah. When it is meal time, they return to their own lands to eat and circumambulate the teaching assembly. Or the Buddha, yeah, the, the teachers. The land of ultimate bliss is complete with all these merits and adornments in the original universe. Uh, we don't eat, okay? We don't feel hungry. We have all kinds of fruits, all kinds of trees, all kinds of things, but nobody needs to eat anything. <laughs> Too busy creating, enjoying, uh, enjoying the creative power and making things and then make it disappear or make it again, you know, and blessing, enjoying also. And there is more still. The land of ultimate bliss is complete with all these merits and adornments. And there is more still. In this land, there are birds of all sorts of wondrous variegated colors, white cranes, peacocks, aureoles, uh, minor birds, cuckoos. <laughs> cuckoos. All these birds bring forth harmonious songs day and night. Their songs communicate such Buddhist teachings as the five roots, the five powers, the seven factors of enlightenment, the Eightfold Path, as well as other teachings. Even birds, they're preaching in that land. When the sentient beings in this land hear the voices of the birds, they are mindful of the Buddhas, mindful of the Dharma, and mindful of the Sangha. The birds reminding them. And I turn back the page here. Do not think that these birds were born as birds due to karmic retribution or past misdeeds. Why not? In this, because in this Buddha land, the three evil planes of existence as animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings do not exist. In this Buddha land, even the names of the evil planes of existence do not exist, much less the realities. All these births are the creations of Amitabha Buddha, fashioned in order to broadcast the sounds of the Dharma. <laughs> like radio, living radio. It's also a miracle, eh? <laughs> mm. In this Buddha land, there is a slight breeze that steers the rounds of jewel trees and jewel nets so that they emit subtle, wondrous sounds like hundreds and thousands of melodies playing all at once. All those who hear this, these sounds spontaneously are developed the intention to be mindful of the Buddha, the Sangha, and the Dharma. This Buddha land is complete with all these merits and adornments. 
What do you think? Why is this Buddha called Amitabha? The light of this Buddha is infinite and shines on all lands throughout the universe without obstruction. Thus, this Buddha is called Amitabha, I mean limitless light, yeah? Also meaning limitless lifespan, yeah? He lived forever. Yeah. Also the lifespan, yeah? Now look at that. <laughs> also the lifespan of this Buddha and his people is an infinite number of immeasurable aeons, and so he is called Amitabha. You live forever there. You like to go there, huh? Can do, can do. Mm-hmm. Amitabha Buddha attained enlightenment ten eons ago. It's not long, eh? Normally it's a numerous uh, asamkhya, aeon and eons, eon. and this only ten eons ago. Young, <laughs> young Buddha. <laughs> Moreover, this Buddha has innumerable disciples, all of whom are our hearts and whose numbers are incalculable. Amitabha also has a following of innumerable bodhisattvas. Chacha, crowded family. <laughs> the land of ultimate bliss is complete with all these merits and adornments. None of the sentient beings who are born in the land of ultimate bliss ever fall back into a lower realm meaning they are avivatika. Many among them have only one more lifetime to go before enlightenment, so they're not complete. They, they're okay, just that they're not, like, enlightened. Oh, yeah, the Buddha just fessed them up, but doesn't mean that they are enlightened, not very enlightened, perhaps not because they still eat, huh? <laughs> they adorn their garment with flowers and all that. Sounds cute. Yeah, as long as you can live forever and peaceful there, who cares? Mm-hmm. One more lifetime. These beings are very numerous and their number is incalculable. When sentient beings hear of the land of the ultimate place, they must take a vow to be born in this land. Why so? so that they can be together with all these beings of superior goodness. One cannot be born in this land through minor good roots or blessing or virtues or causal and causal connections. I mean, have to be real good, real good. Pass all the exam, pass all the tests. If there are good men or good women who hear of Amitabha Buddha and recite his name single-mindedly and without confusion, for one day or two days only, yeah? Yeah. Or three days or four days or five days or six days or seven days. From one day to seven days then, huh? Then when these people are about to die, Amitabha Buddha and all the sages who are with him will appear before them. When these people die, their minds will not fall into delusion and they will attain rebirth in Amitabha Buddha's land of ultimate bliss. If you don't like study with me, there's a choice here, okay? (laughs) Back up, plan B. (laughs) No problem, I'm not jealous. Otherwise, I wouldn't tell you. But you have to recite single-mindedly, not like you. I'm Amitabha, what? (laughs) Amitabha who? Mm, Master, I concentrate. <laughs> I have seen this benefit, and so I speak these words, mean Sekamoni Buddha spoke these words truthfully, yeah? I have seen this benefit, he said. So I speak these words. If sentient beings hear what I say, they must make a vow to be born in that land. He didn't even say make be born into Sekamoni Buddha land, yeah? Maybe because Shekhamoni Buddha doesn't make a vow to take sentient being up into his land, but Amitabha Buddha did. That's why. Okay? And Shekhamoni, without jealousy, introduced his colleague. What I mean is, the Buddha spoke the truth. 
That's why if you go to China or some Buddhist land, or Taiwan or Vietnam, you heard people they gather in the temple for one, three days or seven days retreat, just recite his name all day. And of course, meditate some also, eh? but otherwise they just recite his name. When I was younger, I, I sing this Amitabha Buddha song for you. Yes. At that time, I could uh, stress my voice very long, remember, and very high. I cannot anymore. I can talk still, but I don't have such an energy to to sing like before, like that time. Right now, I am extolling the benefits of the inconceivable merits of Amitabha Buddha. But in the Eastern direction, there are also countless other Buddhas. The Ashabhya Buddha and the Buddha marks of the polar mountain and the Buddha great polar mountain and the Buddha light of the polar mountain and the Buddha wondrous voice, etc. Each of them preaches in his own land with the eloquence of a Buddha and covers a whole cosmos, speaking the truth. All of you sentient beings should believe this scripture, extolling their inconceivable merits and which all Buddhas protect and keep in mind. This secret, this merit, most Buddha knows about it and protect them. Marvelous viewers, we appreciate your company for today's episode entitled Buddha Stories, The Land of Amitabha Buddha, Part 4 of 7 on Between Master and Disciples. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May your minds be tranquil and awaken to the wonderful music of your souls. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.